Cash Flow Diary Podcast, Episode 23. Congratulations, you showed up. Give yourself a high five in celebration of your success. Welcome to the Cash Flow Diary, where new and experienced investors come to take confident action towards their goals. Your host is a family man, a real estate entrepreneur, investor, coach, and instructor. As a master facilitator of Robert Kiyosaki's Cash Flow 101 game, he's inspired many to begin their journey into creating cash flow for themselves and their family. And now, here he is to offer you the tools required to earn the income desired. Your cash flow coach, Jay Massey. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Cash Flow Diary Podcast. Glad that you are here. Uh, just so you know, if you haven't heard us before, make sure you go over to episode one to check out the format of the show and understand a little bit about who I am and what's going on, and most importantly, why you may want to continue listening. Uh, right now, uh, as the cash flow diary would state, I, I love cash flow, and this is more or less a record of what it's going to take or what it's taking me to get to a thousand units free and clear. And I, I'm just sharing with you everything that I can share with you uh, through my journey. You know, at this particular moment, uh, we're approaching 400 units, and I'm very, very excited about it. And I just want to keep going and keep going. But in this process, I thought it would be helpful to show other people how on earth to do this thing uh, so that they'd have the opportunity to duplicate as much or, or as little as they would so decide. And again, you know your situation better than I do. You know whether or not you listening to this is of value and you know whether or not you know how to put the teams together and make things happen. And if you're saying to yourself, you know, I would like some assistance in making things happen, that's why we created the free e-course LearnInvestingNow.com, LearnInvestingNow.com. You can go over there and go ahead and get the e-course today because it will teach you how to do the most basic concept that I started with as a wholesaler. Uh, I used to be able to purchase and sell uh, properties in a 72-hour period. That was kind of like my major thing that I wanted to do. Uh, and I would buy them at a discount, sell them at a discount, and be able to you know, keep that going for quite some time. Uh, and if something like that is of interest to you, feel free to go over to learninvestingnow.com and get uh, your course now. Now, you may also notice when you go there, I am bribing you. Yes, this is what I'm doing. I'm bribing you. I want more reviews on the podcast. So for those of you who are also willing uh, to give a positive review of the podcast, please do so. And I will give you a free month of our premium membership on our website, which has additional courses, additional information, and even has the full version of all of the live recordings. you If you were listening to the previous episode, you probably heard some live recordings. You probably wished you were there. Well, we've got the next best thing to being there. Uh, I have the ability, of course, to upload those uh, videos, and you can see them uh, for all of our premium members. They are also there. And again, I always go through our forums answering questions, making sure that everyone's questions are answered as best as I possibly can to be able to help everybody get what they're looking for when it comes to real estate. And last but not least, if you have a, a desire or if there's anything that we've shared with you that you find of value, would you let us know? Uh, 800-689-1764. Again, 800-689-1764. It is a toll-free number, voicemail, call in, leave a comment about the show, leave a question that you'd like us to answer and we'll do our best to do exactly that. Well, enough of that. Let's get down to business. Uh, we have our cash quote for today. And it comes from a person who definitely has a lot of cash. <laughs> things you like to do should be a hobby of yours. But things the world does should be a business of yours. That's how I heard it from... Uh, as it was relayed to me, and I was told that Mr. Warren Buffett said that. I kind of like that idea. Things you like to do should be a hobby. So, you know, many of you know uh, I like photography. If you've been over to the Facebook page or, or some of our websites, etc., uh, many, not all, but many of those photos, especially the ones on Facebook, uh, were photos that I took myself, and I like doing them. Uh, but so therefore that that's a hobby, right? But the things the world does should be a business. And 
you probably have figured out that the world likes to live in houses <laughs> or housing. Maybe it's an apartment or a condo or a townhome. Uh, it doesn't matter. Or maybe uh, you're, you, you've learned that businesses like having a place to stay as well. Or maybe you, you've chosen, like if you think about it, the world loves to go to the movies and the movies are done at a theater, which is also another type of real estate play. So the, those things should be a business of yours. So think about that uh, as you w walk around, drive around, if you're on the treadmill right now, uh, whatever it is uh, that you're doing, think about what does the world like to do and try to customize that for your real estate. You might be surprised at what you come up with. Anyway, so here's what we're going to do. Uh, I've got more, more and more uh, live uh, video, or sorry, live audio, because the video is inside the premium membership. Anyway, uh, I've got more of that for you today. And, uh, you know, we, we do our best to select some of the best five and 10 minute segments that we possibly can, because we've got hundreds of hours uh, that, you know, uh, to choose from. And, and I just can't put hundreds of hours up here. You don't want to hear that. Uh, or maybe you do. And that's why you're a premium member. Maybe you don't. I don't know. But I want to give you four different little clips this time that I believe could help you very, very clearly understand some very, very powerful yet basic uh, concepts that have the ability to literally free your mind. I know that when I learned them, uh, it changed the way that I looked at money. It changed the way that I looked at resources. It changed the way that I just look literally at the world and it still affects me to this day. I know when I've shared it before with many different audiences, uh, they've they've had various reactions, but the number one overwhelming reaction has always been, wow, I can see possibility for myself. Hopefully you'll have that reaction too uh, as we get through all four of these on this particular episode. So let's get started. Times we get mixed up without understanding what the outcome is going to be. Where's the train going to end? Know where it's going to end before you board. And that's what I'm trying to help you understand here. That way you avoid being let down going real estate didn't work. All I got was one single family house and they just put $100 a month in my pocket. Well, what'd you expect it to do? That's what it was supposed to do. But you had a different expectation from the beginning. Now, while we're on this subject, I want to show you the value of $100 a month. Because $100 a month doesn't sound like a lot, does it? Okay, I, clearly we have fallen asleep, so let me help you. <laughs> $100 doesn't sound like a lot, does it? No, not at all. But let's do some math. <clears throat> if you receive $100 a month, how much is that a year? $1,200. So that's the same as $1,200 a year. <clears throat> In order to receive $100 a month for an entire year, let's assume for a second, instead of using real estate, you used a certificate of deposit, CD at a bank. What I'm doing is that I'm just pulling up right now what a CD looks like in terms of the interest rates, and I just want a one-year CD. So a one-year CD... I see some various rates, the highest, you know what, let's go for higher and see if we can make it really good. Five-year CDs, let's go with a five-year CD, see what the best rate is going to be because the banks are clearly looking out for my best interest um, and I want to make sure that I get the absolute best interest. So the highest number I see so far is 1.05. And that's probably the highest number. So let's go with that. So here we go. If I was to use a CD and I want it to produce a simple $100 a month, the best rate I can currently find is 1.05%. So here is what I'm going to do, do my best. Can you see that kind of, but not really? Move it from there and focus. Okay. Is that going to do it? Yeah, now? No, no, that's just not going to happen. Okay, so I was going to do the math, but I will write out the math for you. So I am going to do 1,200, because that's what we want to receive 
All I'm going to do is divide by the interest rate, and that's going to tell us how much money we need to have set aside sitting in a CD, sitting there, that we have to earn and own and then leave alone to be able to earn $100 a month. So that's 1.05%. It's going to give me a dollar amount. $114,285. So, uh, yeah, cents. right? <clears throat> the number I come up with is $114,285.71. That's all. So, isn't this the same thing as saying, if you could learn to buy one single family house and put $100 a month in your pocket, isn't that, using none of your own money or credit, isn't that the same thing as saying, I've learned how to earn $114,285.71? Do you see the equation I'm making? Okay. You say, well, I don't have $114,285. Great. How long does it take you at your job to earn $114,285.71? How many years? Gross. Gross income. Gross income? Two years? One year? Five years? So couldn't... Couldn't I also then say that learning this skill set could save you five years of time or two years of time? You say one year, okay, one year of time. If I said net, some of us, you were like, I'm never going to get there, <laughs> right? <laughs> right? So in essence, what I'm showing you how to do collapses time frames. The two things that I was hoping that you'd be able to pick up from that were the earn, own, and leave alone, and understanding what a skill set is worth. When you go to your job, when I go to my job, or, well, job, when I used to go to a job, we all traded uh, none of our own money or credit in exchange for compensation, right? So we, we don't get shocked or surprised that, hey, this person got a job and they don't have to use their own money or credit to be able to generate income. When you apply that same level of thinking to a real estate transaction, it, it all suddenly begins to make sense. Uh, we don't wait for ourselves. And you, could you imagine if you, if you didn't go get a job until you had the money to buy a job? You say, you know what, I, I can't, I don't have uh, enough money, so I can't go, I can't do anything, and, which is kind of what we do when it comes to, you know, real estate investing. We say, I, I don't have any money, so I can't be a real estate investor. Uh, could you imagine if you said, I don't have any money, so I can't go to work? Well, that doesn't make any sense. You, you go to work to get money. You do your real estate investing to do the same thing. And when you go to work, you don't have to own the company to work there. And even if you do own the company, you don't even have to own 100% of the company to work there, right? Well, m my point is simply this. If you can learn to have a skill set that has a certain dollar value to it, um, isn't that what you were after in the first place? You went to school or college or, you know, post-secondary school or academy, whatever you called it. You went there to learn something so that you go out there and generate income. What I've found to be true is learning the skill set of real estate investing has the ability to allow you and I to go out there, apply that same skill set, work those same number of hours, or sometimes more if you so choose, to be able to create significantly more value. And therefore, because the marketplace says we're more valuable, we earn more money. And we don't have to first earn the $114,285.71. And instead, we create value worth $114,285.71. And then we get paid. It's the same thing that happens with your paycheck. You create value that is equal to what you and your employer said the value you're going to create is worth. And you do that over 40 hours, 60 hours, 80 hours, what have you. And the, the difference now is that you have an opportunity through real estate 
to create as much value or as little value because there is no floor to this either, right? So you, you have the opportunity to go either direction. I like that choice. I really do. All right, so let's get to the next one uh, because one of the, this is absolutely, it covers two very, very important things. And then uh, I'm going to share with you a, a personal example uh, of something that I've recently done that illustrates these uh, further as well. Okay, you're saying eventually purchase. So then if you've got this property on your hands for a while, somebody needs to be making a payment on it somewhere? You've made an assumption that there's a loan. Okay, so yeah, I did make an assumption that there's mm -hmm. a loan. So how is this going to work if there's no loan out there? Yeah, what do you mean if there's no loan out there? So who pays? Okay, who pays? I would purchase it for the twenty six. I would have to have $26,000 of my own to purchase this. I never said that. You did. I'm asking you. Oh, got it. I need <laughs> the answer to the question. She's like, tell me. Yeah, tell me. No. Oh, okay. Now I understand what you're asking. Yeah. No. When I, okay. So you're, okay, here's the difference. You're used to when you go to the store, you say, okay, if I want to buy this marker, you take the marker to the cash register and you need to have the money at that exact second right. at the cash register. Okay, so I'm going to give you an example so that you understand the difference. When it comes to real estate, there's, it, it works a little bit differently when it comes to real estate, okay? You still, yes, at some point, someone needs to go to the cash register and check out, all right? Mm -hmm. At some point. The only question is when. The difference, though, is that you've chosen that you're going to buy something long before you actually have to check out. So once you get the property under contract, the day you get the property under contract is not necessarily the same day that you check out. Got it? So that's how the wholesaler makes or earns their money is you may buy this, quote-unquote, buy. See, when we use the word buy, we assume so many more things. That's the, it, I'm trying to break mm -hmm. it down into its pieces. So when you put the property under contract, that could be today. What's today's date? Thank you. No, wrong month. <laughs> June 22nd of 2013. That's today. Where, but you said today that you're going to pay $26,000 for it. Part of the real estate contract also specifies the day you're going to go through the checkout line. Okay? And that day could be any day you and the seller agree to. Any day. There's no rhyme. There's no reason. It's all about what you negotiate. Make sense? Mm -hmm. And here's the fun part. Even if you negotiate a day and that day comes and you're not ready to check out, you can ask for an extension. <laughs> okay? So keep that in mind. So for the sake of this example, let's say that you said, okay, I will give you $26,000 on June 28th. What that means is that between June 22nd and June 28th, Somebody better be at the title company or escrow company with $26,000 plus in sales tax, if necessary, because uh, in some states they do do that, which is weird. Delaware, don't do that. Anyway, um, <laughs> uh, as well as uh, uh, title uh, fees, as well as insurance and some additional closing costs, which the title and or escrow company will be able to calculate and let you know. Okay, does that make sense? There was a lady in here at the in the morning who was title and escrow. Are you still here? She should have stayed. Oh well. Um, here's the point. During this time, that's who you're really talking to is that title and escrow person. That's what they're doing. They're researching title. They're making sure that the person you're buying from owns it. They're making sure all these other things. So in this six-day period is when you go out to the marketplace and tell people, hey, I have a property under contract at $26,000. I'd like to sell it to you for $36,000, but it's worth forty. dollars And if they say, yeah, then they become the buyer who shows up 
on that day, that day being June 28th, pays you the 10, pays the original seller the 26, and then they walk off happy, skipping about their new purchase. Make sense? So that's what uh, that's the simplest way I can describe wholesaling. Okay. That, but that's what you do. Mm-hmm. Now, if you do this right, what you tend to do is you do a lot of these at the same time. The most I've ever done in one week is 11. Um, and you do all, and you just work. Wholesaling is way more about effort than it is anything else. Because <laughs> it's effort to find the property, and it's effort to find the person. And you've got to do both sides. Does it make sense? It makes sense. Um, as far as being a real estate, a licensed real estate person, anybody can enter into a purchase contract like that without, and go to a title company and present documentation and all this. I'm going to shake her hand because she is now getting it and she is an investor. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You don't wait for someone's approval. You don't need no license. You just need to be the prince. You just need you to be the one know. who has the property under contract. That's what I, I right. You're like, really? Yeah. That's what I learned too. I was like, you mean I don't need a license? I can do this without a license. I can just go, like right now. Like right now. Like right now, right now? Yes. That's exactly what I'm saying. You could leave here today, take the two sentences I just taught you, go do that tonight, and technically it is possible for you to be in contract by Monday and get paid by next Friday. It's up to you. Could you uh, repeat the two sentences, please? Oh, yes, now we want to know what the two sentences were. <laughs> got it, got it. It's very simple. At the end of the day, when you're, especially when you're wholesaling, my, the phrase that I used was very simple. Hi, my name is Jay. I'm a wholesaler. What that means is that I buy properties at a discount and I sell them at a discount. Sentence number one. Number two, what type of investing are you looking to do? Between those two things... The only question becomes is how many times are you willing to ask that? I was just willing to ask it more than the next person. That's it. Now, when you listen to that, you probably heard me mention things about the words assuming. When you just remember this, what you assume limits your possibilities and opportunity to learn. Uh, Just because, you know, to you, the word buy means one thing. Uh, you need to understand how someone else is using the word buy. Uh, as I've been taught, and you have probably uh, been taught the same, uh, nothing has any meaning except the meaning you give it. So when someone says, hey, I just bought a property, find out what they mean. Don't assume that that meant that they actually paid for it, closed on it, all this other stuff, or even if they sold it. Find out some of the details and don't, you know, don't be afraid to look, you know, stupid. As I've always said, you can't learn and look good at the same time. No big deal. Well, as I said, I was going to share with you a, a personal example on how this ex- also plays out. Uh, one of the ways this plays out is sometimes instead of being the wholesaler, if you're looking for additional property, you want to be the one uh You want to use a wholesaler. You want to find a wholesaler to get you the property that you're looking for. Now, one of the questions that I like to use in that case is, do you have anything that could be seller financed? I've asked that question primarily of individuals who have a real estate license. And this time, uh, actually a few weeks probably after uh, this particular recording, it led to this particular answer. Um, and this is how it went down for the wholesaler. Uh, the wholesaler uh, in this particular case happened to be a licensed real estate agent. Uh, however, he was not functioning as an agent in this particular case. So he had a property under contract at a commercial property, 18,000 square foot uh, building. He had it under contract, uh, including commission and everything for $840,000 and had previously uh, been valued at around 1.8 million and long story short there were just issues that needed to be resolved and they were not looking to close on the building themselves so well he kind of wanted that but i negotiated that part away because i i wanted to hold the whole thing and in this particular case uh he was asking for a fifteen thousand dollar fee for having the deal under contract so here's what happened he found the property. He's standing in line. So if you're thinking about uh, a wholesaler he, he, and using, you know, when you go to a store, you're standing in line 
And then he's, while standing in line, I happen to walk by. I see that he's holding this, or actually I'm asking people, hey, do you have anything that could be seller financed? He holds up his hand and says, yes, I do. Here it is. And then I ask him, what is it going to take to stand in line in his place? And in this case, it happens to be, you know, uh, $15,000 because, and that was worth it to me as the buyer, because now I'm able to go ahead and purchase uh, a property and only have to put $100,000 down. And the seller was going to carry the balance uh, at 5% interest only. And I was able to negotiate a situation that allowed me not to have any payments uh, on the loan until the building was 50% or greater occupied. And the major issue, again, is the that the building was vacant and that the building is going to need some reconfiguration. Uh, it was previously a one-tenant building. We're now making it into a multiple-tenant building. Uh, so, again, all of these things are the things that made it possible or why the person wanted or would be willing to sell, the seller willing to sell, and why the wholesaler would be willing to do so. And the bonus for me in this case was that it actually had a, a cell phone tower on top. So that was very, very exciting. Now, in this case, you may look at that and go, well, I, I don't have $840,000. Well, that's okay. You, again, don't have to be the one that has the actual funds. However, your friends, your family members, whatever, are probably going to want to participate and you can control the deal that way. And as this works out in this particular case for myself, that's exactly what I did. Uh, and I was able to find uh, individuals with the ability to help with the down payment. And I will, I still have to find them, but I'll find the individuals that'll help with all the custom and configuration, et cetera, that needs to happen to the building uh, so that we can continue renting it out. And one of the greatest things is that during the escrow period, because of understanding what happens when I stand in line, we started looking for tenants immediately. And we're in the process of negotiating not one, but two completely separate tenants uh, probably should have around four to 5,000 square feet of this building leased here within the next couple of weeks. And we're on our way to having the entire 18,000 square foot building leased. And what's amazing about that is it's using the exact same process that you just heard in the previous segment. I'm just showing it to you from both sides of the equation. All right. Now, some of you are probably thinking, well, okay, all of that sounds great. However, what, what about that earnest deposit and that money? So listen to this next segment. All right, when you enter into a, uh, an agreement, do you have to ever put money down, or is that always negotiable? Awesome. We've made another assumption. I love assumptions. <laughs> Excellent. Hey, hey, James, can you get me one of the orange drinks, please? I'm just thinking about it, or somebody. Anyway, uh, here's the assumption. He said, when you uh, enter in a contract, do you have to put money down? Here's my direct answer. No. What the correct answer is, again, I'm always going for the understanding of words. The correct answer to have a contract is something called consideration. When you look up the legal definition of consideration, it's something that is of value. Of value is relative. Is anyone in here a hairstylist and or maybe uh, a masseuse? Anyone? Hairstylist right here? Excellent. I'm, is it hairstylist? Masseuse. Oh, my goodness. You got a whole lot of friends right now. <laughs> so how many of you would be would consider, watch me, you say you can't do a deal, I'm about to give it to you right here. How many of you would consider 10 one-hour massages something of value by a show of hands? <laughs> okay, right? So here's what we do. I write a contract with you, and I am the masseuse, and I say, you know what? Instead of me using money for consideration, how about I give you 10 one-hour massages instead. And if you say yes, guess what we have? A contract. Did I, did I just help you a little? <laughs> so how, how much money does that cost her? None. It's a different way of understanding the word consideration and what is of value. Um, 
and, and that's great because that's just two sheets of paper maybe, right? She can give them a coupon. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, hold on. The <laughs> question is coming. One of the things I love about this is you can tell I like to get creative, but I, didn't, I don't like get creative just for the sake of it. I get creative because I had no choice. I had no uh -huh. choice. At some point, even if you have money and credit today, you're going to run out of money and credit. And guess what you're going to be stuck with? Getting creative. I was gifted the opportunity to do it now. <laughs> And it's the only way I know how to work. It's the only way I know how to work, and I love it. Now, remember, value is in the eye of the beholder. You've heard me say that before. And what's really key to remember is, A, am I an attorney? No. Doesn't really matter because you must understand consideration. Now, Part of the challenge with consideration, that just so that you have an understanding, because I've, I've tested this with different title companies and all kinds of things, is that I've learned that just because it is something of value between you and the other party, <laughs> the title company still has to have a way to protect that something of value. I was attempting to use a uh, gold uh, eagle once, or it might have been a gold Krugerrand, one of the two. And as a consideration, just because so that I say so that I could say I could do it. Everything was fine with the contract. Seller was fine with it. They didn't really care. Kind of intrigued them. They thought I was quirky and I probably am. But I learned that because the title company didn't have a way of protecting the gold coin from loss or theft. That was the issue that stopped me from doing it. I thought that was interesting. I thought I'd share that with you because sometimes we let some simple things get in our way and we just go, well, I don't have an earnest deposit, so therefore I can't do a deal. Well, that's not true. Uh, remember, as I said before, in this episode even, what you assume limits your possibilities and opportunities to learn and grow. So now let's talk about this last section. One of the things to understand is that wealth is a team sport. And most importantly with that is that you should do only that which you do best. That's one of the things that I like to do. Now, that don't take that to mean never grow. That's not what I'm saying. What I am saying, however, is do what you do best. You can learn other things, and you should. But do only that which you do best. That's the highest and best use of your time. So think about that as we go through this next section. How do you get your rehab teams together for your out-of-state properties? Ooh, yeah, great question. How do you get your rehab teams together for the out-of-state properties? That is uh, a challenge. That is work. That is hard because um, not every contractor does the work that they say they're going to do. The only way to find that out it's sometimes to trust them with small jobs. You've heard it said, he who can be trusted with little can be trusted with much. That's very true. Start them out small, work them up. Start them out small, work them up, and work with many of them till you find the ones that understand what you're doing. Because some contractors also can only think in granite. That's a problem if I'm doing Walmart, right? Because I'm not doing a granite kitchen. They need to get familiar with words like formica. <laughs> and if they're not familiar with words like formica and goodwill, and uh, Habitat for Humanity, they, they're not the contractor you're looking for, okay? So sometimes we'll get new windows, quote-unquote, from Habitat for Humanity, and what that really was is that the Nordstrom investor had extra windows, donated them for the tax deduction, and then we picked up those same high-quality windows at a discount. And if your contractor doesn't know how to do that, you're going to have trouble, and you need to interview them. You need to ask them that question, and you need to be very clear on the play. Because all of them, especially right now, will say, yeah, I can do that. Good. But here's the question I love asking. <clears throat> Before we go through the can you do it, what I want to know is, could you tell me about the types of jobs you prefer to do, the ones that you like doing the most? They'll tell you. And the ones that they prefer to do will be nothing but clues over whether they're Walmart, Target, or Nordstrom. They'll gladly tell you. They want to tell you. Because they're hoping that that's the type of job they get to do this time. And then they disqualify themselves without knowing it for you. But they could also say, yeah, I like these and this neighborhood, bloom, bloom, bloom. Okay, excellent. Show me 
some of the work that you've actually done in this neighborhood. Where can I go to see what you've done? Excellent. Perfect. You can check these people out with the bank. You can check them out with the city. You, you should do all of these things. It is work. It is a process. It takes a long time to find a great construction team, rehab team that you can put together and trust, especially if you're not going to be the GC yourself. Because remember, you, you got to just do the, this is work. This is why I'm saying it, you're bringing something very valuable to the table, right? Because I, I told you earlier, I made the mistake by having the wrong contractors in place. Yes, there's so much, she said, is that why I stay in one geographic area? Yeah, that is the primary reason, because it's so much work to get the right team in place. By the time I've done it, I am so not eager to do that again. <laughs> I'm like, cool, now that I've built a solid foundation, let's build a high rise on it. Let's go deep. I mean, let's go deep so we can go high. Why? Why do I want to keep jumping from city to city to city to city? Do you know how much work that is? You're making it harder. It's hard enough deals with people, right? Real estate would be perfect if people weren't involved. <laughs> just, just give me a house. A house is very obedient. People? Oh, my God. It's, it's challenging. Well, there it is. You understand now that real estate is simple. People is the skill set that you need. You need interpersonal skills to make real estate work. And here's the good news. You can gain them. Uh, and regardless of where you are today, as I've told many people time and again, and very few believe me these days, but it doesn't really matter. I am naturally an introverted and shy person, period. That's just naturally me. Take me to a party. I'm probably going to find a corner, some chips and some dip and be happy. Uh, however, it doesn't mean that you can't learn to develop the skill sets necessary for your business to be successful. So, uh, I want to end this particular episode with the cash flow question. Nope, didn't forget. Uh, making sure that we still cover the cash flow question. For those of you who have not participated in the game before, guess what? Answering the question correctly gets you an autographed copy of my upcoming book, Cash Flow Creation System. Uh, which I detail my entire business model, everything from A to Z, how to make it happen, my all of the tips and tricks and techniques in my story, everything that goes into uh, being able to build a portfolio of cash flow. Um, so last week's question uh, was, during the sales process, what's the most important skill set to develop? You know, didn't get any correct answers on this one, but that's okay. I'm here to tell you anyway. During the sales process, the most important skill set to develop is listening. Listening is the very skill set that I hopefully you are practicing right now. So for those of you who want to answer this week's question, make sure that you call in to 800-689-1764. Again, that's 800-689-1764 or email your answer in to cashflowquestion at cashflowdiary.com. Make sure that when you call in or email that you actually leave your address because it's kind of hard to send you a book through the email. <laughs> we need a way to contact you people. Excellent. So this week's question is, other than using other people's money, name at least three other types of leverage that real estate provides. Other than using other people's money, because everyone is familiar with that. They, they hear it. You hear it all the time. Name at least three other types of leverage that real estate provides. Again, uh, 800-689-1764 to send in the answer or cash flow question at cashflowdiary.com. That's it for this particular episode. Hopefully uh, you enjoy the live sessions. Uh, feel free to send us an email, let us know, leave a review, do those types of things. And guess what? Until next time. Thank you for investing your time with Jay Massey and the Cash Flow Diary. When you have a moment, please visit iTunes and leave a positive comment about the show. And go now to our website, CashflowDiary.com, to take advantage of our free business building course, Cash Flow Foundation. Gain the knowledge, understanding, and skill that will teach you how to never need a job again. Until next time. Until next time. Until next time.